Everybody glad you're here? Really? Okay, how many's not good? Who, who's not glad that they're here? Okay, I got a couple of honest people in the bunch. <laughs> the much, the things you'd much rather be doing right now, right? Okay. My name is Deputy Robert Hatcher. I've been a deputy with Pasco County Sheriff's Department for almost 20 years now. Prior to that, I worked for Clearwater Police Department while I went to college. And way before that, I was in the United States Marine Corps. Part of my duties in the United States Marine Corps was I worked a division called Correctional Custody. Correctional Custody in the United States Marine Corps is basically prison boot camp in the military. Any of you guys ever watch like uh, military movies and see boot camp? You guys never seen pictures of boot camp? Anything like that? You have, okay. What do you think? Nice? No. Fun? No? Correctional custody is like boot camp on steroids. They would do things to people like take them out and pass out sledgehammers and have them beat on pine tree stumps till the pine tree stumps went away. They would take them out on a big field and have them get on their hands and knees and give them rulers and scissors and they cut grass all day. Now these individuals had to do this kind of stuff for what the military considered crimes like not saluting an officer, um, writing a bad check, sometimes maybe being drunk on base. Pretty serious punishment, right? You think that's fair? Probably not. How many of you guys think it's fair that you're here? Be honest. How many of you guys think it's fair that you're here? No. Two types of people in this class, and I come at this class in two different ways. I have two different individuals in here. I have people in here who have issues with anger, have issues with violence. They like to use physical intimidation. They like to use violence. They have problems controlling their temper and they can't control themselves and they act out of violence. That's one type of person that I have in here. The other type of people that we get in this class are some of you might fall into this category where you did what you thought you needed to do. You did what you thought you needed to do and somebody else said, you know what you did was wrong. So let me come out and tell you the first thing that I get across in my, in my class. And kind of what we got into is, was that fair, what happened to those guys in the military? Is life fair? Is life fair? No, life's not fair. Are you held accountable for what you do? Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody's held accountable for what they do. Even the President of the United States is held accountable for what they do. Somebody else gets to decide the rules. Somebody else always gets to decide whether what you did was right or wrong. So who decides those and how do we decide that here in the state of Florida? What is it that tells us what's right or wrong? What do we have? Laws. Absolutely. We have laws that tell us what's right or wrong. Whether or not you can put your hands on someone else, whether you can threaten somebody else. Okay, we have laws. And who makes the laws? You guys know who? Who do you think makes laws? The government. The government but how do they get those? People, very good. People of the state of Florida get together and they decide that something should be a law, something should be right or wrong. So they introduce it to politicians and people, you know, up in government that push it through government and they eventually get the governor to sign off on it and that becomes a law. Now almost everywhere in the world there are laws that say you can't put your hands on other people, that you can't threaten other people been all over the world, all kinds of different countries, and almost everywhere there is in the world, there are laws that says that you cannot threaten people, you can't put your hands on other people. Same thing here in the state of Florida. So is there anybody here that was charged with a crime other than assault or battery or some type of crime that had to do with an act of violence or threat of violence? Anybody here for burglary or for grand theft or anything like that? Okay, how many people were charged with an assault? We'll get there. That's good. Okay, we'll get there in a minute. Anybody charged with battery? Okay, so we got, anybody charged with domestic battery? First thing that I got to get through, and kind of the boring part of the class, what I got to get through is the laws and what it is. So those of you that were charged with an assault, can you tell her, tell me, what's an assault? You were charged with it, what's an assault? What do you think an assault is? Don't know. What do you think an assault is? 
Violence? Verbal abuse. Pretty close. What do you think? Pretty close. All right, here we go. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. An assault. An assault is a misdemeanor. It is nothing more than an intentional or unlawful threat by a word or act to do violence to someone. You have the ability to do that violence, and in so doing so, you create a well-founded fear that it was going to happen. Okay, what is that? That's a big legal way of saying you threaten somebody, you threaten to hurt somebody, you have the ability to hurt that person, that person believes that you're going to hurt them, that's an assault. That's a crime. That's a misdemeanor. You're going to hear me talk about two different things, misdemeanors and felonies. This is what you need to know about that. If I say misdemeanor, that means you go to the county jail. It means you go to the county jail over there in Land Lakes for a year. If I say it's a felony, that means that you're going to go, you come in. That means that you're going to go to prison. Prison means you go for a year up to life, up to possibly the death penalty. Okay, prison, more than a year, county jail, a year or less. Felony, you go to prison, misdemeanor, you go to jail. So an assault is a misdemeanor, okay? It's punishable by six months in jail. You can go to jail for six months for threatening someone. How many of you guys go to school? How many times a day do you hear somebody getting threatened? What's that? At least, right? Right? At least four or five, if not more. All day long there's somebody threatening somebody. That's an assault. That's a crime. People in the state of Florida said they don't want you going around threatening people. You can go to jail for that. That's an assault. Okay? Step one up. A little bit different. An aggravated assault. What do you think an aggravated assault is? Using your hands. Using your hands? Pretty close. Pretty close. What do you think an aggravated assault is? No? Anybody got a guess? An aggravated assault is nothing more than an assault, but you use a weapon. You threaten to hurt someone. You have the ability to hurt them. They believe you're going to hurt them, and you've got a weapon. So what can be a weapon? Tell me what a weapon is. A knife? Okay, that's a weapon. What else can be a weapon? A bat? What else is a weapon? A gun. A gun. What about an apple? Can an apple be a weapon? Can you hurt somebody with an apple? What about a textbook? Okay, what about spit? Spit. You could get charged with a batter if you spit on someone. Do people have diseases? Do people have colds, flus, hepatitis, AIDS, all kinds of nasty stuff? Spit, blood? What about tampering with someone's food? Yeah. Absolutely. Urine, feces, pee poop. You see, you laugh and it uses a weapon. It uses a weapon all the time. So an aggravated assault is threatening someone with a weapon. Okay, now who was charged with a battery? So what do you think a battery is? Hitting somebody is a battery. What do you think? Give me another definition of a battery. What's that? Fighting. Fighting. Fighting can be a battery. Okay, this is, this is what a battery is. This is how simple a battery is. The offense of a battery occurs when one person intentionally touches or strikes another person against their will. That's a battery. You intentionally touch or strike someone against their will. You committed a battery. You guys, almost all you guys go to school, right? So you're walking down the hallway in school, and you're late for your class, and there's some people milling around, and they're talking, and they won't get out of your way. And you reach out, and you push that person out of their way. What have you just done? Battery. You've committed a battery. You get into an argument with someone, and you're, you're, it gets a little heated or whatever, and you push them to get them away from you, because maybe you don't want the, want the argument to get any further. So you reach out, and you push them. What have you just done? Battery. Battery is a misdemeanor. You can go to jail for a year for a battery. All right, so this is easy. You guys should get this because you guys are pretty smart. So if that's a battery, what's an aggravated battery? What's that? Violence with a weapon. Same thing. You intentionally touch or strike someone with a weapon. Okay? And we've said a weapon can be just about anything. A weapon is anything that can harm somebody. 
So while we're talking about weapons, there's two classifications of weapons. There's weapons and there's deadly weapons. So what's a deadly weapon? What would you think a deadly weapon is? Gun or a knife. Anything a reasonable person would assume would cause death or great bodily harm. Gun, knife, what about a shovel? What about a brick? Anything a reasonable person would assume would cause death or great bodily harm. That's a deadly weapon. Okay. If you got cut on your face and you wound up getting three or four stitches, had a little scar there, would that really bother you? What about you? No. Now, if you had a scar on your face, would that bother you? Yes. Okay. Great bodily harm. Scar. Great bodily harm. Person goes to the hospital. Great bodily harm. You can get charged with a felony for giving someone a scar. You can get charged with a felony for sending someone to the hospital. That amps things up. That means that things are a little more serious. So that brings us to our next charge, which is felony battery. A felony battery can be charged in two different ways. And this is a felony. Felony battery means you go to prison. When you cause great bodily harm on the other person, or if you have past convictions for batteries or aggravated batteries. So if you make it a habit of going around hitting people, or you've been convicted of battery a couple of times, they can charge you with felony battery. So you're not going to go to jail for that little fight you just had, you're going to go to prison for that fight that you just had. What's a domestic battery? Um, violence in your household or in your family. Mother, father, stepfather, stepmother, brother, sister, um, you know, parents, if they're uh, single, their boyfriends, anyone that's in your home or readily in your home is a domestic battery. So while we're on that, there's a little tangent I like to go off on. Can your parents use reasonable force to detain you or to punish you in your home? Can your parents put their hands on you? How many people say yes? yes. How many people say no? Yes. Your parents can use reasonable force to detain you in your home or to punish you. It is legal in the state of Florida. Now we're talking reasonable force. We're not talking about beating you with a coat hanger or burning you or what's obviously abuse, actually beating you. But this comes into play where, let's say you want to go out. You want to go out with your girlfriends or you want to go hang out with the guys one night and your parents say, no, you're staying in your room. So you get into a little conflict, conflict resolution, right? That's what the class is called. You get into a conflict. You want to go out, they say you have to stay. Something's going to give because we've got a conflict. So your parents say, no, you're staying in your room. And they put their hand out to keep you in your room. And they push you back and say, you're staying here. And you reach out and you knock their hand out of the way and you say, no, I'm going out. What have you just committed? Domestic battery. You can go to jail for that. Your parents can use reasonable force to detain you or to punish you in your home. You can't touch them. Whether you think it's fair or not, what we say? Life's not fair. If you don't like it, wait till you're 18, move out. Their house, their rules, you got to suck it up and follow their rules. That's the way it is. That's what the law says. How many of you guys watch TV shows? Cop shows? Cops, um, L.A. Law, all that kind of stuff. Any of you guys watch those shows? Detective shows? Okay, what's a homicide? When somebody kills somebody else? Anybody else know what a, got another definition of homicide? You're correct, but it's kind of, it's a little more complicated than that. Actually, it's kind of, it's more complicated and it's also easier. A homicide is an unnatural cause of death. Somebody gets struck by lightning, that's not necessarily a homicide. Okay, somebody gets hit by a car because they ran out in front of the car, that's a homicide. 
It's an unnatural cause of death. It's not people, somebody dies of old age, somebody goes to the hospital, they get the flu and they die. That's not a homicide. Homicide is an unnatural cause of death. Okay, so what's a murder? When somebody purposely kills someone is murder. Okay, so one of the reasons why I teach this class, and one of the things that I want to get over to get across to you guys, and the big deal about this class, while you have to sit here and you have to listen to me lecture at you guys for an hour, here's one of the things I want you to remember out of this class: the difference between a battery and a homicide is what. Somebody dies. The difference between a battery and a homicide is somebody dies. That's it. So you're in school and you're fighting with somebody, you're pushing and shoving and you're arguing, and you push that person and they fall backwards and they hit their head on the locker and they bleed out and they die. What have you just done? Homicide, a natural cause of death. The difference between a battery and a homicide is someone dies. One of the first cases that I worked, <coughs> excuse me, when I was a deputy with Pasco County was an incident where two people, two guys decide they're at a bar and they've been drinking and they're, they're drunk and they decide that they're going to go out and they're going to fight because they've got this conflict going on, right? And they're going to go outside and they're going to settle it like men. Mistake number one, can you agree to fight someone else? No. The only people that can fight in the state of Florida legally and not be against the law are licensed, sanctioned professional fighters. Just because you and this other person decide that you're going to fight doesn't make, mean that it's not against the law. You can't mutually agree to fight someone. Both of you will get charged, one of you will get charged, somebody's going to get charged, somebody's going to end up going to jail. No such thing as a mutual agreement to fight. It's against the law. So that was mistake number one. Mistake number two is can you control your circumstances all the time? Can you control everything around you? No. When you get into an argument, when you get into a conflict with someone, it's out of control usually, right? You're not picking a real safe place to do it. You're not, you're not you know, making sure that everything is you know, just so, so that nobody's going to get hurt. It doesn't happen like that. In this instance, they didn't do that either. They went out in the parking lot. So they exchanged a few blows and somebody got pushed or somebody got hit. And you know those yellow things in the parking lot that your car rolls up against to keep you from going forward? Have you guys ever seen what, what keeps those in the ground? Metal rod, right? Well, in this case, either this metal rod had worked its way up or was never put in, and when the guy fell, went through the back of his head and he died right there. Mutual fight, now he's looking at a homicide. Minimum, the guy's looking at going maybe 15, 20 years in prison. Didn't mean to do it. Had no intention of doing it, but it happened. You don't have to intend on hurting someone to be charged with a crime. Crimes of violence, a lot of these crimes, batteries, stuff like that, there's no intent. When you steal something from a store, yeah, they have to prove that you had intent on stealing that. You hit somebody, it's against the law to hit somebody, point blank. They don't have to prove that you had intent on hurting them. They don't have to prove intent that you wanted that person to die. Now, if they want to charge you with murder to give you a life sentence or to give you the death penalty, then they have to prove that you intended for that person to die, or they had to prove that the way that you did it, a reasonable person would assume that that person would die. You hit somebody in the back of the head with a shovel, that's pretty reasonable to think that that person's going to die, right? <coughs> premeditated is a little more complicated, does, and that's what I'm getting at. It doesn't have to be premeditated to be charged with murder. It doesn't have to be premeditated. You can go away for the rest of your life for felony murder, for being involved in a crime where somebody dies. You're hanging out with your friends, and your friends are up to no good, and they go in and break into somebody's house and somebody dies while they're breaking into the house and even though you're just sitting in the car you can go to prison for the rest of your life 
How many of you guys know about Rachel Wade, what just happened down there? We all know that, right? It was all over the paper. Okay. Right? Conflict. Boyfriend. Okay. Both of them like the same guy. He's playing them out good. He's playing one against the other. He gets them so aggravated, so mad that they decide that they're going to fight each other. One of them brings a knife. Whether she's trying to protect herself, whether she wanted to hurt this other person, they get into this fight. She stabs this girl. She dies. She's 27 years. How old are you? 15. How old are you? 14. Anybody older than 15? How old are you? 16. You haven't even lived 27 years yet. 27 years she's going to prison. She could have been going to prison for the rest of her life. She could have gone for the rest of her life. Why? Because she made a very bad decision. Conflict resolution. She had a major conflict. Resolution is not to go out and fight in the street. <coughs> Definitely resolution wasn't to pick up a knife and bring it with you. That quick. Been doing this a long time. I work in this courtroom. This is my courtroom. This is a misdemeanor courtroom. My judge is Judge Roberts. She handles misdemeanor cases. And every day we send people to jail here for fighting, for hitting, for threatening people. That happens every day, all day long here. I've also worked felony. Felony, more serious cases, murder, um, more serious beatings, shooting people. And as long as I've been doing this, I can only count maybe one or two times where the person that I'm dealing with has told me that they intended on that to happen. What do I always hear? Man, I didn't think that was going to happen. Deputy Hatcher, if I only knew, I didn't think he was going to die, or I didn't think I could get charged with this crime. You know, I, I just didn't think for a second, and he ended up dying. I didn't think for a second, and I hit him with the car. You don't have to intend on hurting someone to go to jail. Battery. Intentionally touching or striking a person against their will. Assault. Threatening to do violence against someone, having the ability to do it. Creating in them a fear that it could happen. So now we said that in laws are made by who? The people of the state of Florida. Right? Right? We all said that. We all agree? In a roundabout way, long way, people of this state decide what the laws are going to be. How many of you guys have been in a courtroom before? Okay. Let me ask you, who sits up there? What's the judge's job? Very good. Absolutely right. Judge's job to give you your sentence. What else is the judge's job? Find out what happened? Kind of, sort of. Judge's job to give you your sentence. Judge's job, she's like the referee, or he's like the referee. He makes sure that both sides play by the rules. A prosecutor, their job is to enforce the laws in the state of Florida. Their job is to bring charges against, prosecute, and ensure that the person who's broken the law is punished in one way or another. Defense. His job is to, if you have an attorney, defense attorney, their job is to try to, number one, show that you didn't do what you were charged with. Number two, to show that whatever you did wasn't that bad, that you shouldn't get that much crime. What's the jury, or what, that much time, excuse me, I misspoke. What's the jury's job? To say whether you're guilty or not. Absolutely right. That's the sole job of the jury. Guilty or not. And who makes up the jury? How do we get a jury? <coughs> Random people. People from where? Where do we get the people from? What do you think? Where do you think we get the people from? Do we go to New Jersey and get the people? Do we go to Miami and get the people? Pasco County, right? People of the state of Florida. These people right here, right around you, the same people that you live with, the same people you shop with, the same people you see at the mall, are the people that are going to be on that jury. Now, it's their job. Did you do what you were accused of doing? Yes or no? All right. So, 
You're on the jury. Person standing in front of you, what do you have to decide? Did this person intentionally touch or strike the other person against their will? How hard is that? Did the person want to get hit? Did they get hit? That's it. That's their job. It's the, like you said, it's the judge's job to, define, to determine a sentence. Very, very easily to be, easy to be found guilty. Very easy to be found guilty because the law is the law. The law says you can't touch or strike somebody against their will. Whether what you think you did was right or wrong doesn't play into the fact of whether you're guilty or not. It may play into the fact of what the judge decides that they're going to do with you. difference between a battery and a homicide is somebody dies. Difference is between misdemeanors and felonies, great bodily harm. Can we always control those factors? No. We don't necessarily get to pick time and place and what happens when we get into a conflict with somebody. Not always. Not usually. told you there's two types of people in this class. There's those of you that are here because you did what you thought you should do and somebody else said you should have made a better decision. The other type of people are people that have issues. They have issues controlling violence. They have issues controlling their anger. They have issues as far as they like to use anger or violence or threats of violence to make other people do things to make them see their point of view or to make them feel small. In fact, some of these people even, it makes them feel good to make other people feel bad, to show that they have authority over them or they have power over them. Well, we have a place for those kind of people because they don't play by the rules. Where do you think that place is? Jail, prison. Prison is full of people that are violent. That's where they go. If you can't function by our rules, if you can't function in society, that's where we put you. We take you over there behind that steel door and we put you in a jail cell and eventually in a, in a week or two we send you up to a big place with a bunch of jail cells in it and a big fence around it. People with guns that make sure you stay in there and you live in there with other people that are violent. Very violent. It's their world. They live there. They make the rules there. Any of you guys ever been on a jail tour? Ever been to a jail? I know they stopped doing those a little while ago. You've been on a jail tour? You've been in a jail? Okay, this is a nice place? What's that? Didn't seem that bad. Okay. You ever been to prison? Okay. Prison, a little bit worse than jail. Jails can depends on who you're with. But do you get to pick who you're with or where you get to go? Somebody else is going to pick that for you, right? So just because you might have got charged with a battery, just because you might have hit somebody, you don't know what the guy in your cell with you is charged with. He might have killed somebody, right? He might be one of these people that has this issue. They like to use violence, they like to use threats, they like to use intimidation to make other people feel bad because that makes them feel good. There's something wrong with them, there's something twisted in them. Yes? So why do you think those people, like if like, say somebody gets charged with battery and somebody gets charged with like murder, why would you put them in the same cell with each other if they're only, like people that child abuse, like molested children, mm -hmm. and them, why don't you put them all in one cell together? They try to, but there's so many people over there that eventually, you're going to get stuck with somebody, or we don't know. Just because someone commits a crime of, let's say, somebody drove without a license in Pasco County, that doesn't mean that they didn't kill somebody in another state. You don't know that. So that's the risk you run. But you're risking the chance of somebody dying in, the, um, in jail. Absolutely. It's a violent place, and that happens. That's jail. And that's the chance that you take when you make bad decisions. That's the chance that you take when you choose, when you make that choice that you're going to act out in violence, that you're going to threaten somebody, or you're going to hit somebody. That's the chance you take. 
and nobody expects you to sit there at, at that time and say, oh, you know, I, I shouldn't have done this because that could happen. You should have said nobody expected you to do that. But now that you're going through this class, we hope the people that facilitate this class, myself in teaching it, that's one of the things that I hope may pop into your mind. You need to make a better decision because that's a possibility. It's a possibility that I wind up over there with people who are not nice people. Who, people who like to take things from people. See, if you go over there and you go to jail, they're going to try you. They're going to see how tough you are. So probably the first thing that's going to happen to you when you get over there is the clothes that you're wearing, that they give you, that blue uniform and those shoes, which everybody wears, the same shoes. In fact, you know these people that you see out on the street with those signs that say, we'll work for food? Should say, we'll work for beer? They wear those shoes. They wear those clothes. They go to jail, too. But no matter how bad and nasty those shoes or those clothes are, they're going to come up to you and they're going to say, you know what, I like your shoes better. Give me your shoes. What are you going to do? Are you going to give them shoes? How many people would give them up? How many people would give up your shoes? Sure. Okay. One. How many people are going to fight? All right. You don't have an option. That's your two options in there. You're either going to fight or you're going to give up your shoes. Okay, so let's say you give them up. I'm just gonna, what do you think is going to happen to you the next time? They're going to take something else from you, right? Because what? It's about having power over you. Okay. So let's say you fight. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get charged. They win. There are rules. They know how to play by the rules. Either way, they win. They get to take from you. If you give up your shoes, they win because they took something from you. If you fight, then they take from you because you're going to get locked in your cell or you're potentially going to look at doing more time in jail. They win. It's a no-win situation. Life's not fair. That situation is not fair. They, they know how to play by the rules. It's a lose-lose. They know how to work the system. They will take, yes, ma'am. What do they care? That's their, they, they live there. They live there. They, they, they're there for their life. These people that are in there, they live there, they come back time and time again. You're the new person. They'll take your food. They'll take your clothes. One of the things they like to do is they like to mess with you. They like to take your sanity. They like to see how long it takes for you to do one of two things, to either go to psych wing, go to the medical wing because they're driving you crazy, and you tell somebody that you want to kill yourself, or you can't take it and you just want to get away from these people, or you go to protective custody. If you go to protective custody because you want to be left alone, then they took your privileges because you're going to be in a cell with yourself or maybe one other person. You're not going to get to go out and be free like they are to run around during the daytime in the day room. You might get an hour out or two hours out a day for recreation to, you know, to walk around the, the little fenced-in yard they have there to take your shower, make your phone call. You guys know what Buderoo is? One of the ways they like to mess with people, Buderoo is urine or feces, pee or poop. And what they'll do is they'll put it in a shampoo bottle or a ketchup bottle or any type of bottle, and they'll let it sit. They'll let it get ripe. Let it sit for two or three weeks. And then when you walk by, they'll spray it on you or spray it in your food. Or when you're locked in your cell, they'll come by and they'll spray it on you. It's called Buderoo. They do it all the time. They do it to the officers. They do it to the other inmates. Very degrading. Horrible thing to do to somebody. Why? Because it makes them feel good to make you feel bad. The other thing that will happen to you if you go to jail is the one most horrible thing that can happen to anybody, and that is they will try to take sex from you. It's not about love. It's not about liking you. It's not about whether you're gay or not gay. It's about taking from you. 
and that's the worst thing that they can do to you to make them feel better. The more they can degrade you, the more they can show power over you, the more violence that they can portray upon you makes them feel good. He said in the class, these people have a problem. Somewhere along the line, they didn't get it. Something's wrong with them. They never got a hold of this anger issue. And they like to use physical intimidation or violence to hurt other people. And that's the number one way they can hurt you. And girls, it happens to you just as much as it does the guys. Because it's about anger. It's about violence. It's about taking from you. They never got a handle on this whole conflict thing. They enjoy conflict. They like conflict. It makes them feel good to fight. It makes them feel good to take. A lot of, guy, a lot of you that come into the class, you know, you hear me talk and you say, well, yeah, you know, the deputy's up there talking about this and that, but that's not me. That's not me. That can't happen to me. Rachel Wade, can't happen to me. Not going to happen to her. Silly arguments over a boyfriend who doesn't care about either one of them, who's up in New York, they had to force him to come back to even testify for the trial. She's going to prison for 27 years. The other one's dead. She's not coming back. Why? Conflict resolution, wrong way, right? Major wrong way. Let it get a little too out of hand. Bad decisions? Big time bad decisions. But you guys would never do that, right? I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of stupid, you know, to go after somebody with a knife. Nine teens charged and bullying that led to girl suicide. Nine Massachusetts teenagers have been charged with involvement in a month-long campaign of bullying that led into the January suicide of a 15-year-old girl, prosecutors said. Phoebe Prince's body was found hanging in a stairway leading to her family's second-floor apartment in South Hadley, Northwestern District, Massachusetts. It appears that her death on January 14th followed a torturous day when she was subjected to verbal harassment and physical abuse both on and off the computer. What were they doing? Text messaging, emailing her, Facebook, harassing her at school. To the point she commits suicide, they may go to jail. Over what? Over computer. Over harassing somebody. It happens. It happens every day. It happens all the time. It's a serious thing. Doesn't seem serious. It's a very serious thing. It can happen to you. Make a bad decision, you wind up here. Having to listen to me talk to you for an hour. Make another bad decision, you may wind up over there in jail. Got to control our emotions. You got to control your anger. Is it easy? No. I grew up just like you guys did. And the one thing that I said when I started taking this class is I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm not going to come in here and say, you know, that things are easy. It's not. Your life is hard. The age you're at right now is tough. You guys growing up now is harder than it ever was. You face more stuff than I ever did. What's the easiest way to avoid a conflict? Walk away, right? Right? No. Who says yes, that's the easiest way to avoid a conflict? Who says it's very hard to walk away? Absolutely right. The hardest thing that you will ever do, probably, is to walk away from someone that's talking smack about you. Hardest thing you'll ever do is to walk away from someone in school that's threatening you or challenging you to a fight. 
That ain't easy. That's hard. Is it the right thing to do? Probably. Is it a better decision? That's up to you. Choices you have to make. Do I make the hard decision and walk away? Or do I run the risk of getting in trouble? Do I run the risk of what can happen? It's not easy to let somebody talk bad about you. It's not easy to let somebody, you know, run their game on you or, or, or have other people talk bad about you. It's not easy to have to listen to your parents' rules and follow the rules at home. If you don't, are you going to suffer the consequences? Absolutely. The one thing that I will promise you, it does get easier. When you become an adult, and you have more choice over who you can hang around with, when you have more choice over what schools you go to, when you have more choices over what you can and can't do, it does become easier. Right now, it's tough. It's tough. And you guys have to suck it up and take it. Choices you make determine what happens to you. Hard choices. Somebody else hold us accountable for what we do? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you guys going to do? It's up to you. I can't make that decision for you. None of the people that run this class can be there the next time that you're faced with a conflict, the next time you're faced with somebody that's talking smack about you or another person that wants to fight you at school. Nobody can be there to make that decision for you. So what are some things that you guys you think you can do? What are some things that you think you should do when you're in that situation? Give me, give me an, somebody give me an idea. What do you think? What about anger control? Think it's a good idea to try and keep our anger in check? When we let other people make us anger, angry, we give them power over, them, over us. What, what's anger? What is it? What's it called? Emotion. emotion. Can we control our emotions? To a little bit, right? But not really. Who's got a, who's got a family pet? Who's got a dog? You like your dog? I love my dog. Love your dog? Yeah. Somebody came in here and said, oh, I'm sorry to tell you, but your dog just got hit by a car. How are you going to feel? I'm going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to be upset, right? Whether you, can you be happy about that if you want to be happy about that? No. No. All right, that's a sad thing. That's a horrible thing to happen. Somebody talks bad about you. Somebody's calling you names or, call, or, or, or saying something that you did that you didn't do, trying to ruin your reputation. You gonna feel bad about that? That make you angry? Yes. Can we control being upset? Maybe to a little bit, but what can we control? What we do about it, right? Our actions. You can only control your emotions to a little bit. You can totally control your actions. Nobody's ever gone to jail for being mad. No one's ever gone to jail for being upset. You can get totally, completely pissed off at somebody. That's not going to send you to jail. What sends you to jail? What sends you to jail? what you do about it, right? Your actions. Think beforehand when you're in a situation, think about the possible conflict. Think about possible resolutions. What can you do? How can you do how can you avoid it? Can you avoid it? Situational avoidance. That's a big fancy term for saying don't go where that other person is. Don't get baited. You guys know what baiting is? Baiting is when 
bunch of people are talking smack about you, trying to get you to do something you shouldn't do. They're baiting you. They're trying to get you in trouble. They're trying to get you to go over there and get into a fight. Why? Because you're going to get into trouble for it. If the people you have conflicts with hang out at a certain area, you think it's a good idea for you to walk through there every day? What's going to happen? Something, right? Either they're going to talk about you and you're going to get upset, or they're going to challenge you to fight, you're going to end up fighting, avoid them. Avoid that situation. What about hanging around with people that are violent? People that like to do violence, people that like to talk a good game about, you know, about fighting and stuff like that. Think that's a good idea? No. Avoid those kind of people. How many people here were with somebody else, one of your friends or whatever, when you were in a conflict, when you got into the fight? Where are they at? And where are they at now? They're not here listening to this, right? Okay. Only you get held accountable for what you do. They don't. I'm not telling you that you have to go out and be a snitch. But if something's going down that you don't like, if something's going down that's bad, there's nothing wrong with saying, you guys do what you want to do. I can't be a part of that. Because only you are going to be held accountable. When a conflict arises, decide your options for handling the problem. Can you talk to these people reasonably? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Can you find somebody that you can mutually talk it out with? Maybe a mutual friend? Maybe what they're hearing about you and what you're hearing about them might not be altogether true. There might be some people playing that game and they're trying to get you trying to get you two to have a conflict, get you two to fight, because they've got some purpose in it. Find a go-between. If your angers and your emotions get the best of you, if you find yourself getting so angry about a situation, about a person, can you go to a teacher? Can you go to someone to talk about it? You guys know what venting is? You guys ever heard what venting is? Venting is blowing off steam. You got a friend, you can go talk to your friend about how bad this person is ticking you off all you want. You can talk to your friends or to another person and say, oh, this person's talking bad about me, or this person wants to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and blow off steam that way. If that's going to bring your anger level down, because that's going to keep you what? Out of jail. Some people in this class, maybe not in this class, but in the classes that I teach, and this is an honest class, sometimes you have chemical imbalances. Sometimes there's people that need medications to help keep their moods down. It's nothing different than being a diabetic. Diabetics have to have medication to help their body process sugar. Some people have to take medications in order to keep them from being violent or to keep them from being anxious to help calm them down. You know, I have to take medication to keep my blood pressure down. It's no different. If I don't take the medication to keep my blood pressure down, I'm going to have an issue. I'm going to have a problem. If you don't take your medication to help con you control your anger, to help you control your temper or your anxiety, you're going to have a problem. So is it a good idea to take that medication if you need to take it? Otherwise, you're going to have an issue. All right, guys, you've been in here for an hour, and you've listened to me. And I really think you guys have listened. You've been one of the better classes. I can see it on your faces that you've listened. I wish that I could come up here and give you A, B, C, this is what you do, and you're never going to run into a conflict again. I wish I could tell you, if you have a problem with this person, this is how to solve it. Truth is, no one can do that. No one can tell you how to solve every single problem. But what we can tell you is exactly what 
We told you in this class, you're going to be held accountable for what you do. You've got to make good choices. Good choices are hard. Good choices aren't always easy. Sometimes the easy choice is the wrong choice. Walk away if you have to. Vent to a friend. Suck it up and say, you know what? Mom and dad, you don't understand me. I don't like being here, but I've got five more years of being home and then I can do what I want. Whatever you got to do, because I guarantee you nobody's going to be doing your time but you. Nobody else is held accountable for your actions but, what, but you. You guys have a great opportunity right here. And when I was growing up, it's something we used to call a do-over. When I was growing up, and I don't know if they still use the term or not, but we had this thing called do-over. That's like if you're playing basketball, you're doing something, and you mess up, you're like, oh, man, I'm a do-over. It's like it never happened. The people that run this class, the people that run teen court and this program for you, they're giving you like a do-over. It could be like it never happened. How many of you guys play video games? Okay. How many of you guys play other sports, basketball, football? How do you win at a video game? You get the most what? The most what? Kills, Kills or what? Yeah. Score. How do you win a football? You person with the most what? Points. Points. Any of you guys ever seen one of these? You know what this is? This is the court game. This is the criminal justice game. This is a criminal punishment code score sheet. Everything you do, do you have a question or no? Everything you do, you get points. Only this one, the more points you get, the more you lose. The more times that you're charged with a crime, the different types of crimes, they all go in here, and this is what the judge does. Remember we said the judge decides what's going to happen to you? This is what the prosecutors give to the judge that says this is all the stuff that this person's done, and that's what they use to help them decide how much time you're going to get. The way you win this game is what? Don't score any what? No more points, guys. Good decisions, all right? Right now, none of you, as far as I know, have one of these, and that's a good thing, because they don't go away. Once they're there, they're there. All right, that's it for me. You can see the instructors of the class to check out.